Hello and welcome to your strength building workout for bone health and osteoporosis. For today's workout, you'll need a kettlebell or a large-ish weight, about 10 to 12 pounds, and a yoga block and potentially a chair. Just have one close by just in case you need it. All right, let's get started. We're starting standing with a connecting breath, which I call the 360 canister breath. So we're going to inhale and expand through the entire canister, so pelvic floor, belly, and rib cage expands. And as you exhale, gather up the pelvic floor, draw the deep core in, and the ribs drop down as well. Go ahead and try this with me. So we're going to inhale, expand, and open. Exhale, gather up from the bottom up. Exhale, you might start to feel your core muscles turn on. Let's do that two more times. Inhale, open. Exhale, draw it in from the bottom up. Good, you can even leave your hands on your core so you can feel what's happening. Inhale, expand and exhale, lift in and up. Good, now hold some tension in the core at the bottom of your exhale. We're gonna inhale and exhale without letting go of that tension. Inhale, exhale, great. This is called bracing. We're gonna hold this brace a little bit while we're moving. This is really important for osteoporosis because you are protecting your spine and your core is braced. All right, so keeping that deep core engaged, we're gonna take the arms up and just gently swim them back like you were doing a nice gentle backstroke. And now you might be asking, this looks like a twist. However, we're keeping our core engaged, so it is a healthy twist for the spine. And we're just moving our arms, finding some rotation in the upper back. See if you can keep your hips somewhat still as you rotate through your upper back. Reach towards the wall behind you. Good. One more set here, and then we'll pause and we'll reverse the direction. So come to a front crawl. Same thing, keeping the core engaged as you're rotating. Good. So your deep core is slightly turned on. And just notice what kind of range of motion you have in your shoulders. All right, and then bring your arms all the way back down. Shake your arms out. We're gonna do a couple of leg swings. So bring your left knee into your chest. We're gonna draw it front and back and just let it swing front and back. Again, finding that core connection. If you need to hold onto a chair for balance, you absolutely can, but we're just finding some space in that left hip. Good, and then we'll switch sides. Bring your right knee into your chest and swinging forward and back. Again, holding onto a chair if you need to. It's a great balance practice. <laughs> but engage your deep core about 20 to 30%. Great. Good. And then come all the way back to the center. Let's take another bracing breath. Inhale, exhale from the deep core. Engage your deep core. Leave your hands on your core. We're going to shift from one side to the next, marching the knees into the chest. And I want you to feel what's happening in your core. Can you feel some activity there as you are marching? If you can't, you can bring those feet back down to the floor and just lift your ankles. Work within your limits here. Good. A couple more breaths here. We're just pairing this bracing breath with some leg lifts. All right, bringing the feet back down. We're going to take some air squats. So you turn to your side, take the hands in front of your chest, and we'll drop down and back up. Now, this is where a chair can come in handy because if you want to use the chair as your guide, you can come down to the chair and come right back up in case you want to go a little deeper, but you're worried about falling down, <laughs> right? So drop down and come up. Good, let's do four more here. Inhale down, exhale up, inhale down, exhale up. We're just warming up the hips and the knees and the core. Now I want you to think about that deep core work. As you exhale, lift that deep core in and up. One more here, exhale, lift. Fantastic. Move back to the center of your mat if you've moved off of it. We're going to take the hands onto the hips. We're taking a hip hinge. So tip your pelvis forward, send your pubic bone back and your tailbone back. Exhale, come all the way back up to stand. Now this is an important distinction for osteoporosis because oftentimes we're told not to forward bend, but we're not forward bending with a rounded back. We're forward bending with a straight spine. We're hinging from the hips rather than from your back. So put your hands on your hips. Let your hips tip forward. Send your tailbone back and exhale, come up. Let's do four more like that. We're gonna practice that breath. Inhale, exhale, deep core lifts. Good, see how much you can let your tailbone articulate back and really open through the back of the pelvis. So the movement is happening from your deep hips. Inhale down, exhale lift, and last one here. Inhale down, your spine is staying perfectly straight, and exhale. 
Great. Move to the back of your mat. We're going to come to that hip hinge. Bend your knees as much as you need to to put your hands on the floor. Keep your spine straight. We're walking out to a plank position. So your choice of plank is up to you. You can do full plank if you have full control of your core. You can bring your knees down. Here, you can also do it on a countertop or even at the wall if you need a little less intensity. So find your appropriate plank, press your hands towards each other, and press through your shoulders. If you are in full plank, squeeze your inner thighs together. Round through your upper back, really press into the floor, and even let your tailbone be heavy. Full deep breaths here, breathing into your back and finding that core connection that we found at the beginning of the workout through the inhale and the exhale. Two more breaths here. Stick with me. If you need to drop your knees down to the floor at any time, you can. And on your next exhale, drop one knee and then the other knee down. We're coming all the way down to the floor for a Superman. So come all the way down, forehead down, arms back by your hips. We're going to lift your shoulders onto your back. Reach your arms off the floor. Reach your legs up, and then your head comes up as an extension of your spine. Stay here. Let your chin drop down towards your chest, right? We don't want to crane the chin forward and create strain in our necks. Lift those shoulder blades back gently. Reach through the fingertips. Reach through the legs. Turn on your glutes. Press your pubic bone into the floor. If you have back pain here, try pressing your pubic bone more into the floor. Find that core engagement. One more breath here. You got it. Exhale. Turn your head to one side. Rest. Take a big, deep breath. Good. We're going to do that series one more time. So put your hands underneath your shoulders. Roll your shoulders back. Press through bent knees. We're coming back to full plank, your version of full plank. <laughs> so if that means on the countertop or uh, on the wall or on your knees, that's great. Or full plank. So let's take 10 breaths here. Press your hands down. Zip up through your midline. Find those deep core muscles. And even let your tailbone be nice and heavy. Find that connection of the deep TVA on the inhale and the exhale. And then take your attention to your shoulders. Can you round them forward just a little bit so you're really pressing into the floor? Press your hands towards each other. So you're creating spaciousness in your back. Two more breaths here. Good. Full inhale. One more exhale. Good. Drop your knees down to the floor. Come into Superman one more time. Elbows back by your waist. Forehead down. Palms are back. Facing the floor. Roll the shoulders back on your back. Reach the hands up. And then lift your legs off the floor too. Go ahead and lift your head. Keep the back of your neck long. Good. Drive your pubic bone down into the floor. And then reach out as much as you're reaching up. And find those places where you feel like you're working in a stressful way. See if you can find a place that you can work with power. Where can you create more power in this position? Three more breaths here. Good. Deep breaths. One more breath here. Inhale. And then exhale, turn your head to the other side, rest on the floor, breathe into your mid-back, let your mid-back expand, and exhale. Awesome. Bring your hands underneath your shoulders, come all the way back up to all fours. We're going to take bird dog. Hands are underneath your shoulders, knees are underneath your hips. Take a breath like we did in the beginning, inhale, exhale from the pelvic floor, deep core draws in. Good. Without shifting to the right, lift your left knee off the floor. And then start to extend that leg all the way back. But keep your spine from dropping down. Can you keep that deep core engaged? And then right arm can extend all the way out. The key here is to keep connection in the core so your low back can be nice and relaxed. And you're working more in your front body and not arching through your back, but staying in integrity in your core. Two more breaths here. Press down through your bottom hand, your bottom knee. Reach out with your extended arm and leg. Good. Release the right hand, left knee. And we'll switch sides. Inhale. Exhale, deep core lifts. Without shifting to the left, lift your right knee off the floor. You already feel that core connection. And then glide that leg back without letting that core connection, without letting your back flare open. Super important for osteoporosis. 
send your right heel back towards the wall behind you and then float your left arm up. We've had deep breaths here, pressing into your hand on the floor, reaching out through the floating arm and leg. Two more breaths here. Can you find some space on your inhale in your mid back? Good, one more breath here. Reach out and then exhale, bring the hand and the knee down to the floor. Great, bring your hands forward, tuck your toes, lift into downward dog. Now, what's important here is that you bend your knees, keep your spine straight, right? We are not straightening our knees and rounding in our back. And then walk your hands all the way back to meet your feet. Take your hands onto your hips, keep a flat back. Inhale, and as you exhale, use your glutes to come all the way up to stand. Excellent. All right, grab your kettlebell. We are going to do some goblet squats. So we're gonna take that kettlebell into your chest. If you don't have a kettlebell, you can just use a weight and hold on to the end of it. But I like using a chair for this because it really creates a sense of stability and you can go a little deeper in your squats. So we'll hold that kettlebell right at your chest. Feet are about hip distance apart. And now remember what we practiced before with keeping your spine nice and straight. That is the key for osteoporosis. We're going to hinge from our hips. So go ahead and find your first seat on your chair and then exhale, come all the way up. If you feel comfortable not using a chair, that's okay too. We're gonna inhale, tap down on the chair. Exhale, come all the way up, use your glutes. Deep core lifts. Inhale down, go slowly with control. Exhale, lift. Good. Inhale down. Exhale, lift. Good. Inhale down. Exhale, lift. Can you keep your core slightly engaged on the way down and on the way up? Hips are reaching back as you're squatting, so your back is staying straight. And then relax your shoulders. Good, exhale, drive through those heels as you come up. Good, last three here. You got it, keep breathing, exhale. And two, come on with me, almost there. One more. Inhale down, exhale, turn on those glutes. Oh yeah, good. All right, let go of your kettlebell. We're gonna come to Romanian deadlifts. We're going to keep both feet straight forward and both feet together. Find your feet about hip distance apart. You can hold onto that kettlebell. If you have two weights, you can hold weights in each hand or just one weight is okay too. All right, we're coming into that hip hinge. So make sure that we're hinging from the hips just like we did in the beginning. Send your tailbone back, bend your knees slightly. Send your hips all the way back. Keep your spine nice and long. As you exhale, squeeze and lift from your pelvic floor as you come up, squeeze those glutes. Let's do that again. Inhale all the way down. Shoulders stay on your back. Exhale, come up. I cannot express that importance enough of keeping your back flat. What it looks like to not keep your back flat is to round like this. We do not want that. Send your hips back. Exhale and lift. Good, let's do five more here. Inhale down and exhale, lift. The way to kind of gauge if you're keeping your back straight is imagine that you had a stick that was attached to your head and all the way down to your tailbone. And you were trying to keep that from moving. It's not wobbling. That is how straight I want your spine. And exhale, lift, good. And that deep core work that we did in the beginning is really going to be helpful in helping you keep your spine stable, which is why core work is so important with osteoporosis. Good, last one here, inhale down, and exhale up. Fantastic. All right, let's put the kettlebell and weight off to the side. Grab your block, we're gonna put it between your knees, bring your feet about hip distance apart. So the width of the block varies. You could also use a ball, you could also use a pillow here. But the point is that we're giving something to squeeze between those knees so we get some internal rotation of the legs and we get more space in the back of the hips. All right, so let's find our squat here. We're gonna inhale, come down into your squat. Now again, spine is really straight. Sit that tailbone back, so those sit bones back. Weight is in your heels. Exhale, come up. Good, inhale back down, we're gonna do 10 here. And exhale back up. Good, can you keep some connection in your core? Inhale down, exhale left. Three, <laughs> inhale down, exhale up. Four, if you need to go at a slower pace than I am, that's okay. Five, 
as you come down, squeeze that block with your knees. Maybe you feel more core engagement when you do. Six. Good. We got four more here. Exhale. See what you feel. See what's activating in your legs and in your hips. Do you feel some glute work happening? Do you feel some core work happening? Hopefully a little bit of both. Good. Last one here. And exhale. Awesome. Great. Take that block out. We'll move it off to the side. We're going to come into split stance deadlift. So grab your weight again. We're going to take one foot forward, one leg back. So we're going to step forward with our right leg first, left leg back. Weight is in front of you. We're going to shift back into your right hip into a hip hinge. All of your weight is on your right leg. This back leg is just here as a kickstand. And then exhale, come right back up. If this is too hard for you, go back to double legs. That's totally fine to stay there. This is definitely more intense. All right, so we're going to do 10 on each leg. That's a one. I want you to think about sending that right hip back away from your right shoulder so that you're really getting a lot of right glute work here. Exhale. You should not feel this in your back at all. Inhale down and exhale lift. And the reason why this is safe for osteoporosis, I'm going to show you from this side, is because we are keeping the spine perfectly straight. We are not putting pressure on the spine. We're actually training our bodies to use our hips for movements rather than our spine, which is incredibly important in keeping that spine healthy. Good. Last three here. And admittedly, I've lost count because I talk too much, according to quite a few people. <laughs> but I have a lot to say. <laughs> Good. All right. Great. Let's switch legs. So left leg forward, right leg back. Left hip is going to move back in space. Take that weight all the way down. So really sit back into that left hip. Let that hip go back. Feel that openness in the back of the pelvis. This right leg is just here for balance. Exhale, come all the way up. Keep your spine perfectly still. Inhale, exhale, lift. You should start to feel this a lot in your hamstrings and your glute. Inhale down and exhale, lift. All right, let's do four more here. Lifting from that glute. Find your breath. Inhale down. And again, if you need to go slower than I am, feel free. Slower can sometimes be a lot better. Good. Last two here. And one more. Excellent. Good. Bring your right foot forward. Shake it out. Now, the next one we're doing is lateral squat. So you can choose the option of using the weight or not. I'll show you with the weight, and you can decide if you want to use it or not. So we're going to hold the weight at the top of your chest, step your left leg out, and we're going to bend into that left hip. So dropping all the way back, and then press all the way back up. Stay on that same side. Back over to the left, and all the way up. Good, so what this looks like from the side is out to the side, hip is moving back, and all the way back and up. Again, my spine is staying very straight, and lift up. If you choose not to do this with a weight, just hold your hands here. Good. Let's do six more here. Leaning into that hip. Good. Really push off of that hip. Find your glute back there to kick off of. If it feels challenging to balance, you can just come here as well. Sitting back into the hip and back up. Good. Last two here. You can kick back. You can. And all the way back up. Great. Let's do the other side. So right leg extends out. Pause here. Sit back into your right glute. Back is straight. Send your hip back in space. And then come all the way back up. Good. All the way back out. So option here is also just to come back to standing. Go back into that lateral lunge. What we're going for is extension through the right hip. I want you to feel that right glute turning on every time you kick off and every time you come back up. Good. We got six more here. Keep that spine straight. And two. Good. Use your breath. Inhale down. Exhale, lift. Three. Come on, you got it. Four. Yeah. Last two. Five. This is it. After this, you're done. We're stretching out. Awesome. Good. Rest. You can drop your weight off to the side. 
he made it. Now we're gonna stretch. Take your feet wide, take the arms nice and wide, go into a squat, and then drop your arms down. Again, we're keeping the spine nice and straight. Right, all the way down and around. Just open up your arms and open out. Good, last two breaths here. One more. Awesome, good, bring your feet back together. Step your left leg behind you and to the side. Feel free to use a chair if you need for balance. We're gonna reach that left elbow down and then all the way up to the side. Down and to the side. Now this is a very gentle side stretch. We're reaching up more than we're reaching over. Mostly going for shoulder stretch and the hip stretch. So no twisting in the spine, all right, good. Come back to the center, left foot forward, right leg back, reaching that top arm up, good. And then dropping the elbow down and reaching up, stretching through the side body. Good, one more here. Excellent, good, rock your shoulders out and we'll do a standing hamstring stretch. Right leg forward, left leg back, sit back into your hips just here. Again, this is a forward bend, but we're not rounding through the back. We're keeping our back nice and straight, which is protecting our spine. You can feel you have to use your core to make that happen. This is also a little bit of glute work. <laughs> feel that stretch in your hamstrings. Good, come on up, we'll switch sides. Left leg forward, right leg back, sitting back. Excellent. Two more breaths here. Again, keeping that spine nice and long. One more breath. <sighs> Good, come all the way back up to stand. We'll take a quad stretch. So you can hold onto the wall if you need. Take your left foot into your hand. Bring your knees together and back. So left knee comes back and towards each other. Drop your tailbone, lift your chest, and then keep that knee moving back. The mistake I see most often with this is people do a quad stretch here, and this actually isn't stretching your quad. <laughs> so bring that knee back, knees together. Good, one more breath here. Fantastic, release it, switch sides. Left hand, right leg, bring the knee back and together. Let your tailbone be heavy, and breathe here into the front of your quads. <sighs> One more breath. Excellent. Release the foot. Come back to your mat. Roll your shoulders out. Imagine you had sponges between your shoulder blades. You're trying to squeeze the water out. Great. Shake it all out. Great work. You did it. Thanks for joining me.